I like baseball One of, for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons I like baseball, though, is this is kind of a minor reason. I really like baseball. But it generates a lot of data. And, of course, that's been a trend for the past few years in baseball. And so now we get pieces of um, collections of data like this. Excuse me. These are 81 home runs hit by Cody Bellinger of the Los Angeles Dodgers and where they landed. So here it is. This It's called a spray chart. And um, it's, uh, it's interesting. There's a lot more over on this side than on this side, and, and nothing down the left field line. Uh, Bellinger's a left-handed hitter, so you expect things to be happening out in this part. And so how can we get a mathematical handle on data like this and, um, and turn it maybe into something useful? So what we're talking about here is kind of the theory of densities and distributions, and that's how uh, we can handle this stuff. And so let's see what's going on. And so I'm going to take um, the, the outfield fence there that's 90 degrees. That's, that's by design. And so I'm going to split this up into six sectors, and um, I'm doing that kind of because the math is easy. Oh, yeah, right. Like, like we're interested in doing things because the math is easy. Um, and so these are 0 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees. I'm not going to write them all down in 90 degrees. So here's just I've subdivided. I subdivided. Okay. And now uh, I, I went and went through the rather tedious exercise of counting how many home runs landed in each sector. So, uh, zero in the down the left field line. By the way, for some reason, I've done the angles um, in the negative direction. Usually, angles are counterclockwise in mathematics, but uh, we'll we'll just it's 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 more like left to right is is what I was thinking. Anyway, zero, six, ten, fourteen, uh, sixteen, and twenty-five, and so. Uh, I'm sorry, 35. Well, I don't want to take 10 home runs away from a guy. Good golly. So here's the here's the data kind of in a tabular form. And this is a very common thing that you might do. Uh, some people say I've put this into buckets uh, or just that I've subdivided the interval from 0 to 90 and said how many things were in each subinterval. And, um, and we can do... It's a little bit easier sometimes to do this with proportions. So I'm going to do um, underneath, I'm going to say what the proportion was in each uh, bucket. So I'll write them all in. I understand this is a little bit tedious, but it's less tedious than me um, pulling out my slide rule. I don't have a slide rule in sight someplace. Oh, somewhere. Um, and uh, so I'm going to write down what the proportion is. So what I do is I just take each number that I had and divide it by 81 because the total was 81. So I've got um, 0.371 and I've got 0.567 and I've got 1.000. Sometimes with rounding, um, these won't get to one. But So there's the raw data and there are the proportions. And... Um, and here's something interesting. So what I've done is um, um, added as I've gone through. So this isn't actually a proportion. This is the sum of the proportions. And so I add up, you know, z zero, uh, and then 681 and 10 over 81. And I keep adding those and adding those and adding those. Or I could add up just the raw data and get 81. And it adds up to 1. So the sum of the proportions is 1. Well, this sounds like a little bit of a puzzle, doesn't it? We've had a subdivision, and we have a sum, and that's part of a thing that uh, that we do a lot. This is one of the big calculus things, is that's part of the integration process. The integration process says subdivide, sample, sum, and then sometimes, and this will be one of the times, uh, you take the limit. So what we've got here is a 
uh, an integral problem, but we're missing a step, which is the sample part. We've got the subdivision, we don't have the samples, but we've got some numbers that we added up. And so this is kind of, instead of saying, oh, here's a problem, what integral solves it? Um, this is saying, here's an integral, what problem does it solve? And so that's how we're, uh, we're going to look at it. And so what we're saying here is we're integrating some function s of t dt. And um, I'll, I'll tell you uh, one of the integrals. The integral from 15 to 30 of s of t dt is um, uh, 0.075. So I know what the integral is. I don't know what the function is. Well, we can just keep subdividing. And, uh, and kind of what's going to happen with the function will become clear. And so, um, so, so we're just going to imagine that now we have a function that we've integrated, and we know all the integrals. Um, well, in this case, we know some of the integrals. But we could uh, subdivide this outfield some more and uh, keep subdividing, and we'd know more and more and more of the integrals. And so that would be uh, a way to get at the function. So this is backwards. It's not given the function, find the integral, is given the integral, find the function. And it's not a fundamental theorem, a calculus thing either. So what we're going to say is we have um, a function s of t, and that's called a density or a distribution. And um, I suppose we could imagine um, Corey Bellinger hitting a million home runs. No one's ever hit a million home runs. Uh, Satohara O hit 800 something, but that would be you know a finer subdivision of this data. And so S of t is the density, and it's defined by what the integrals are. And it's got two important properties. Uh, the first property is that S of t is greater than or equal to zero. You don't have there are no negative home runs, and so. Uh, or there are no negative bacteria living in a petri dish, or there are no negative particles sticking to an unevenly magnetized thing, or there are no negative dice rolls of 54 dice, uh, whatever. Distributions come up in a lot of situations, but it's never negative. It's You're trying to get at how many are in each bucket. That's what we had with this. We have how many are in each bucket, and the in, it, that, that's the integral. It's the integral of s. So s is defined by the by s, the values of its integrals. Okay, and so uh, the other big property is that the integral uh, from a to b. I'm imagining now instead of going from zero to ninety, we've got some interval that goes from a to b of s of t dt is one. And so uh, one way that we can picture this is if we uh, have our, our uh, function s, and that gives us the distribution between a and b. And this, th there'd be a lot of things that would have a function with this kind of shape. Um, and then what we have is if we pick um, two points, uh, let's just call them x sub 1 and x sub 2, uh, because the value of the function is positive, um, the area that I'm about to show you is the integral from x sub 1 to x sub 2 of s of t dt. So that is the nature of a distribution. And, um, and so uh, we get this function that has a very unusual definition from the perspective of what you've studied so far. But this happens so much. There's so many data plots in the universe that look like this. And so what do you, what do you, how are you going to handle this mathematically? And what we're saying is that this is kind of a sampled version of this function s. Um, by the way, Boston, the, the oldest library in the country, was the Boston Athenaeum, where they used a lot of Greek. Uh, we typically use Greek letters for distributions and, uh, and for densities. And so, uh, for example, air density is always rho. Uh, the Greek letter rho. And uh, charge density, I think, is usually delta. That's something that happens in physics. And probability densities are often mu. And so, um, but whatever it is, the function has these two properties. That's what makes it a density. And it's they're defined by the integral. So there's another problem 
which I'm going to defer, which is to find out what the center is. Kind of, where is Cody Bellinger's average home run? There's nothing average about someone who hits 81 home runs in the big league as, when he's only 25 years old. But uh, this is not one season, by the way. And so um, uh, where's the average home run? And that's the kind of thing that if you watch uh, baseball at all, um, players carry three by five cards um, out into the field. And when Cody Bellinger comes up, uh, the left fielder looks at his card and it says, I'll play here. And the center fielder says, I'll play here. And the right fielder says, I'll play here. So how are we going to get those cards? Uh, the data on those cars that the players carry on the field. And so that involves um, trying to find really the center of this distribution. And so um, so that's, that's another topic. But for the moment, here's what the distribution is. And um, he, here's a pretty typical example of how they come up. 